So I'm going back a little bit and find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1 at the point negative 3, 4. And I, I said I'm going back a little bit because I'd like to solve this using the limit process. So if you're, you've already done the limit process and, you're, and you know other ways of taking this derivative, then this may not be the video for you. But if you're worried about the limit process and how it might be applied, then this is the video for you because this is what I think it's most likely to look like. So here we are. Uh, I'm going to start with this idea right here, this thing that you should have memorized. And this is really just um, the slope formula from Algebra 1 rewritten where this is y sub 2 minus y sub 1. And x sub 2 minus x sub 1, if you is this change down here and I can prove that to you algebraically and if you'd like to see that uh, drop me a line and I'll do my best to help you with that but in your inter interim let's let's do this so we're supposed to find it says here to find an, an equation of the tangent line to this graph right here so what we need to find a tangent line is we need a slope they they give us a point and that's good so we can, we're going to use point slope theorem but first we have to find the slope so using this we know that f prime at x is equal to the limit as the change in x goes to zero i want to remind you that it's really really important that you use um, this notation consistently especially those of you who are taking ap calculus or you're taking calculus in in college because your professors are going to just beat this thing to death so here's me taking this first part this first part i'm taking this right here so I'm putting it, the function is a squared function, so here's my x plus change in x squared, plus 2, right? So 2 times x plus change in x, right? Plus 1, so there's the plus 1. And now what I'm going to attempt to do is this second part, which is this part right here. So now I'm going to be looking at this part right here. So it's minus f of x, and f of x is x squared plus 2x plus 1, so here's my x squared plus 2x plus 1, right? And the whole thing is over this change of x right here, so this change of x right here is this one. So hopefully you figured out all I've used right now is fit the, fill in the blanks. So that's all I did, I just filled in the blanks. Uh, just as a matter of notation, you do not have to use this again, so I'm just going to use this is the limit as the change in x approaches zero. I'm gonna do my binomial expansion here, uh, foil, and if you foil this out, you'd get x squared plus two x change of x, right? Because you'd have x times change of x, and then you'd have change of x times x. So there's that plus change of x squared. Please remember that this change of x thing is like f of x. It's one symbol. It can't be broken apart. It's not delta times x. This is one symbol. So that confuses people a lot. They try to divide by delta or divide by x or multiply by something. This is one unit. Okay, enough of that lecture. Um, so that's this piece. And now I'm going to have to distribute this into here, right? So it's positive 2 times x, which is positive 2x, isn't it? 2 times change of x is positive 2 changes of x, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this negative sign, sorry, into here, here, and here, right? Complete distribution, so it gives me negative x squared, negative 2x, and negative 1, all over change of x. Looks like hell right this second, but we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay, uh, because just algebraically, we're going to gather like terms here, and when we gather our like terms, when we gather our like terms, like here's an x squared, here's a negative x squared. They cancel out, don't they? Here's a positive 2x, here's negative 2x. I forgot to bring my positive 1 along, didn't I? All right, so there should be a positive 1 out here at the end. I'm, I'm really sorry, but that should have been dropped. That This positive 1 is this one right here. I didn't bring it. So positive 1 and negative 1 here, they cancel out. So when we do our rewrite, we get the limit, again, this notation that your professors want to see is two, of 2x change of x plus change of x plus oh this is a change of x squared so plus change of x squared plus change of two changes of x right all over change of x now what hopefully you're seeing is that all of these terms at the top have a change of x uh, 
at least one factor of change of x in them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out. So I'm going to factor out change of x. So it's going to look like this: equals the limit as change of x approaches zero. That's just a very small movement. And then I'm going to factor out a change of x. So there's change of x, and change of x times two x is two x change of x plus change of x plus two right all over change of x now let me remind you that we can only factor out i'm sorry we can only cancel factors we can't cancel terms it's really important because i just think i just see happening over and over this change in x and this change of x, they can't cancel these out these are terms but this is a factor so this factor of change of x and this one cancel themselves out now we finally have money in the bank here because look what's going to happen change of x is 0 of 2x plus change of x plus 2. Now there's no reason that change of x can't equal 0. So let change of x equal 0, right? And if you do that, then if change of x is 0, then look what you'd have. If you take this limit, then you're going to get that f prime at x, the derivative, the slope of this function, is 2x plus 2 is 2x plus 2, so 2x plus 2. Remember, we're interested in the tangent line to this function, the tangent line to this function at the point negative 3, positive 4, right? So negative 3, po wow, sorry. Does he know what he's doing at all? So we want it at the point negative 3, 4, don't we? So what we want to know is what's the, what's the slope at x is negative 3. So we're going to take f prime uh, at negative 3, which is equal to 2 times negative 3 plus 2, isn't it? Which is negative 6 plus 2, which is 4. So that's our slope, right? This is slope. Why am I running it as m now? Because the next thing we're going to do, remember, we want the equation of the line tangent. So we want, now we're going to use Point slope theorem, point slope theorem. I hope you remember that from algebra because you're going to use that a ton in calculus because that's always what we're talking about here. So we're going to take that and we're going to say that we have y minus y sub well, that's y minus y sub one is equal to m times x minus x sub one. But we know some values here. For example, we know that y is four, so y sub one is positive four. Put a positive four in here. X is negative 3, so I put in a negative 3 here, negative 3. A negative, this turns to positive, doesn't it? We also find, we found slope. When X is negative 3, we know the slope is 4. So that's slope right here. We take that, drop it in here. We're almost there, you guys. And we get 4 times X times this, so we get Y minus 4, sorry. Y minus 4 is equal to 4X plus 12. Just a little bit more movement, and we get y is equal to 4x plus 16. So there is the equation of line tangent to f, f our function. So that's good news. Let's look at this really quickly. So here's our function. Uh, when I graph this into my calculus, this is a Cas Inspire uh, CX. It's a brand new calculus. really good. But it made a rounding error here. This should be the point negative 3, 4. I'm sorry about that. I just didn't have time to chase it around. But we just came up with the equation, didn't we? And the equation was, uh, of the line tangent to this, was 4x, was 4x plus 16. How can that be true? Because it's negative for you, jerk. All right, so this, right, because we found this slope should have been negative 4. My golly, so here's negative 4. So make this negative 4. Makes this negative 4x minus 12, doesn't it? So negative 4x, we're going to add 4 to both sides, so minus 8. Let's see if that does the trick for us. So y equals 4x, neg good lord, did it again, negative 4x minus 8. Let's try it. Let's 
Uh, if you can tell, I, I took this from uh, another guy who I like a lot on the internet. And my, what I took from him is that he doesn't fig figure them out in advance. He does it afterwards. And I, and I kind of want it to be like that because I want you to see that you have to be meticulous and that this, frankly, is calculus. You've heard before, you know, it's, it's not calculus. Well, this is calculus, and this is difficult, so we have to watch ourselves. There's our line tangent. Works out beautifully, doesn't it? So there's the line tangent. Here's graphical proof, and we did the analytical proof. So I hope that was helpful. Um, give me your comments. Tell me how that was, and tell me how I can make it better. Thanks. Keep working.